A blessed day everyone! Welcome to our 40 day spiritual journey, day 3! Join me here in reading The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. Let's do it! Let's read The Purpose Driven Life book and let's turn the page on chapter 3. Let's start on day 3. Sabi dito, what drives your life? Isa siyang question. What drives your life? I observe that the basic motive for success is the driving force of envy and jealousy. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 4. The man without a purpose is like a sheep without a rudder, a waif, a nothing, a no man. Thomas Carlyle Everyone's life is driven by something. Most dictionaries define the verb drive as to guide, to control, or to direct. Whether you are driving a car, a nail, or a golf ball, you are guiding, controlling, and directing it at that moment. What is the driving force in your life? Right now, you may be driven by a problem, a pressure, or a deadline. You may be dr driven by a painful memory, a haunting fear, or an unconscious belief. There are hundreds of circumstances values, and emotions that can drive your life. Here are five of the most common ones. Yan. pag natin dito ngayon yung mga common ones na nagdadrive sa buhay natin. Iba't iba nagdadrive. Many people are driven by guilt. They spend their entire lives running from regrets in hiding their shame. Guilt-driven people are manipulated by memories. They allow their past to control their future. They often unconsciously punish themselves by by turn the page on the next page by sabotaging their own success. When Cain sinned, his guilt disconnected him from God's presence. And God said, You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. That describes most people today. Wandering through life without a purpose. Yan, wala. Madami ngayon sa atin nagwa-wander. Ano nga ba yung purpose ng buhay? Na parang si Cain pala noon nangyari sa Bible. We are products of our past, but we don't have to be prisoners of it. God's purpose is not limited by our past. He turned a murderer named Moses into a leader and a coward named Gideon into a courageous hero. And he can do amazing things with the rest of your life too. God specializes in giving people a fresh start. The Bible says, What happiness for those whose guilt has been forgiven! What relief for those who have confessed their sins and God has cleared their record! Yan. Napakasaya pag yung pinatawad tayo sa kasalanan natin. Many people are driven by resentment and anger. They hold on to hurts and never get over them. Instead of releasing their pain through forgiveness, they re rehearse it over and over in their minds. Some resentment-driven people clam up and internalize their anger while others blow up and explode it onto others. Both responses are an unhealthy and unhelpful. 
Resentment always hurts you more than it does the person you resent. While your offender has probably forgotten the offense and gone on with life, you continue to stew in your pain per- perpetuating the past. Listen, those who have hurt you in the past cannot continue to hurt you now unless you hold on to the pain through resentment. Ayan, iba pala yung nagagawa sa atin ng resentment. Sila, nakamove on na sa nagawa ng kasalanan sa atin, pero pag di pa pala natin sila napatawad, tayo namumroblema pa din. Your past is past. Nothing will change change it. You are only hurting yourself with your bitterness. For your, for your own sake, learn from it. And then let it go. The Bible says, To worry yourself to death with resentment would be a foolish, senseless thing to do. Many people are driven by fear. Yan. Number two, by fear. Una, driven by resentment and anger. Ito naman, driven by fear. Nagda-driving for sa atin yung galit. Their fears may be a result of a traumatic experience, unrealistic expectations, growing up in a high-control home, or even genetic predisposition. Regardless of the cause, fear-driven people often miss great opportunities because they are they're afraid to venture out. Instead, they play it safe avoiding risk, and trying to maintain the status quo. Fear is a self-imposed prison that will keep you from becoming what God intends, intends for you to be. You must move against it with the weapons of faith and love. Kailangan natin na magkaroon ng faith, pananampalataya, and, and love, pag-ibig. Kailangan din natin magpatawad kasi nakapalob na dun yung love. The Bible says, well-formed love banishes fear. Since fear is crippling, a fearful life, fear of death, fear of judgment, is one not yet fully formed in love. Ayan, yung may takot pa sa namamatay, takot pa sa kamatayan, may takot pa siya sa paghatol, ay not yet fully formed in love, hindi pa buo yung pag-ibig. Many people, sunod naman, many people are driven by mat- materialism. Yan, materialism naman to. Their desire to acquire becomes the, ho- the whole goal of their lives. This drive to always want more is based on the misconceptions that having more will make me more happy, more important, and more secure. But all three ideas are untrue. Possessions only provide temporary happiness. Because things do not change, we eventually become bored with them and then want newer, bigger, better versions. It's also a might that if I get more, I will be more important. Pero mali pala to. Hindi naman temporary pleasure lang pala yung, yung ganun. Pero, hindi rin nagtatagal. It's also a might that if I get more, I will be more important. Self-worth and net worth are not the same. Your value is not determined by your valuables. And God says, the most valuable things in life are not things. Ayan, yung most valuable things in life are hindi things, are not things. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya bagay. Yung pinaka most valuable na kailangan natin i-value na bagay, hindi siya things. The most common might about money is that having more will make me more secure. It won't. Hindi pala. Akala natin kung mas Madami tayong pera ay kung mas 
madami tayong pera, mas magiging secure tayo. Pero hindi. Hindi lang doon. Wealth can be lost instantly through a variety of uncontrollable factors. Yan. Yung wealth daw, pwedeng mawala sa mga iba't ibang hindi natin nakokontrol na circumstance. Katulad ngayon, yung panahon ng COVID. Hindi natin alam na mangyari ito. Madaming Pantay-pantay lang, pwedeng kahit mayaman dapuan nung sakit na to. Real security can only be found in that which can never be taken from you. Your relationship with God. Yan. Yung real security daw ay yung hindi-hindi maaagaw sa'yo. At yun na nga yung relationship with God. Yung magkaroon tayo ng relationship with God. Many people are driven by the need for approval. Yan, isa pang driving force natin. By the need for approval. They allow the expectations of parents or spouses or children or teachers or friends to control their lives. Many adults are still trying to earn the approval of unpleasable parents. Others are driven by peer pressure always worried by what others might think. Ayan. Yung laging nag-worried sa mga iisipin ng iba. Unfortunately, those who follow the crowd usually get lost in it. Ayan. Yung mga usually daw yung pinafollow yung crowd, hindi na napapansin ay sila na pala yung nalulos. Follow sila ng follow sa crowd, pero hindi nila napapansin Nalulos na sila, nawawala na sila. I don't know all the keys to success, but one key to failure is to try to please everyone. Being controlled by the opinions opinions of others is a guaranteed way to miss God's purposes for your, for your life. Yan. Ito, sabi din dito, nothing matters more than knowing God's purposes for your life and nothing can com- compensate for not knowing them. Ibig sabihin, napaka, sobrang halaga na malaman natin yung purposes ni God para sa, sa buhay natin. Jesus said, No one can serve two masters. There are other forces that can drive your life but all lead to same dead end. Unused potential, unnecessary stress, and an unfulfilled life. This 40-day journey will show you how to live a purpose-driven life. A life guided, controlled, and directed by God's purposes. Nothing matters more than knowing God's purposes for your life. And nothing can compensate for not knowing them. Not success, wealth, fame, or pleasure. Without a purpose, life is motion without meaning. Activity without direction and events without reason. Without a purpose, life is trivial, petty, and pointless. Yan. Without a purpose, parang wala nang ganong wala nang ganong point yung buhay kasi mahirap pag walang purpose. Kaya, maganda na malaman natin yung purpose natin dito sa mundo. The benefits of purpose-driven living. Ayan, may benefits yung purpose-driven living. There are five great benefits of living a purpose-driven life. Ayan, aalamin natin kung ano yung mga benefits niya. Una, knowing your purpose gives meaning to your life. Ayan, magkakaroon ngayon ng meaning yung buhay natin kasi alam na natin yung purpose natin kung bakit tayo nabubuhay. We were made to have meaning. This is why people try dubious methods 
like astrology or physics to discover it. When life has meaning, you can bear almost anything. Without it, nothing is bearable. A young man in his 20s wrote, I feel like a failure because I'm struggling to become something and I don't even know what it is. Ayan, meron isang young man nagsulat mga 20s siya. Nagsulat siya, nag struggle siya na maging become something kasi hindi niya alam kung ano nga ba yung ano yung purpose niya. All I know how to do is to get by. Someday, if I discover my purpose, I, I'll feel I'm beginning to live. Ayan, pag daw nalaman niya na yung purpose niya sa buhay niya, parang mararamdaman niya na magsisimula na siyang mabuhay. Sabi dito, without God, life has no purpose. And without purpose, life has no meaning. Without meaning, life has no significance or hope. In the Bible, many different people express this hopelessness. Isaiah complained, I have labored to no purpose. I have spent my strength in vain and for nothing. Job said, My life drags by day after hopeless day, and I give up. I am tired of living. Leave me alone. Ayan, si Job pala medyo nawawala na din siya ng pag-asa. My life makes no sense. The greatest tragedy is not death, but life without purpose. Ayan, ang greatest tragedy daw ay hindi yung kamatayan, but life without purpose. Yung buhay na walang purpose. Sabi dito sa day 3, what drives your life? Isa siyang tanong, ano yung nagda-drive sa buhay natin? At sabi dito, Hope is as essential to your life as air and water. You need hope to cope. Dr. Bernie Siegel found he could predict which of his cancer patients would go into remission by asking, Do you want to live to be 100? Ayan, tinatanong, malalaman natin yung dun sa may cancer patient, tatanong sila, sino yung gustong mabuhay sa 100? Tapos, sabi dito, those with a deep sense of life purpose answered yes and were the ones most likely to survive. Hope comes from having a purpose. Yan, yung may mga hope daw, sila yung Sumagot ng yes at yung likely nagsusurvive. If you have felt hopeless, hold on. Wonderful changes are going to happen in your life as you begin to live it on purpose. God says, I know what I am planning for you. I have good plans for you, not plans to hurt you. I will give you hope and a good future. Yan, makita to sa Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Yung may plano si God para sa atin. At nandun yung, siya yung, we will give him a good hope and a good future. You may feel you are facing an impossible situation, but the Bible says, God is able to do far more than we would ever dare to ask or even dream of. Infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or hopes. Knowing your purpose simplifies your life. Ayan. Kapag daw nalalaman natin yung purpose natin, ay magsisimplifies daw siya sa life. Mas, mas, masisimplihan niya yung buhay. It defines what you do and what you don't do. Your purpose becomes the standard you use to evaluate which activities are essential and which aren't. Ayan, pag alam na natin yung purpose natin, nagkakaroon tayo ng standard para ma-evaluate yung 
mga bagay na ak- o activities na gagawin natin, malalaman natin kung ano ba yung dapat gawin at hindi na dapat gawin. You simply ask, does this activity help me fulfill one of God's purposes for my life? Ngayon, mapapatulong na tayo sa bawat activity natin. Ito bang ginagawa ko ay nafulfill ko ba yung purpose ni God para sa buhay ko? Without a clear purpose, you have no foundation on which you base decisions. Allocate your time and use your resources. You will tend to make choices based on circumstances, pressures, in your mood at that moment. People who don't know their purpose try to do too much. Ayan, yung mga tao do pala na hindi pa alam yung purpose nila, nagtatry sila na masyado silang madaming ginagawa. They try to do too much. And that causes stress, fatigue, and conflict. At may dulot siya, stress, fatigue, at conflict. It is impossible to do everything people want you to do. You have just enough time to do God's will. Ayan, imposible daw na magawa natin lahat ng bagay na gustong gawin ng mga tao. Binigyan lang tayo ng enough time ni God para gawin yung God's will, yung will ni God para sa atin. If you can't get it all done, it means you're trying to do more than God intended for you to do or possibly that you're watching too much television or o kaya sa ibang mga bagay too much na yung nagagawa natin purpose driven living leads to a simpler lifestyle and a sunner schedule the bible says a pretentious showy life is an empty life a plain and a simple life is a full life. It also leads to next page to peace of mind. Yan yung may purpose. Pag alam natin purpose natin, magkakaroon tayo ng peace of mind. Pag na-apply din natin siya. You, Lord, give perfect peace to those who keep their purpose firm and put their trust in you. Sabi dito, Knowing your purpose focuses your life. Yan, napofocus yung buhay natin. It concentrates your effort and energy on what's important. Yan, mas napofocusan natin o nakaka-concentrate tayo ng effort at energy kung ano yung mga bagay na mas importante. You become effective by being selective. Yan, nagiging efektibo tayo at napipi- selective kasi naging selective tayo na pipiliin natin yung dapat gawin. It's human nature to get distracted by minor issues. We play trivial pursuit with our with our lives. Henry David Thoreau observed that people live lives of quiet desperation, but today a better description is aimless distraction. Yan yung Nagkakaroon tayo ng aimless distraction, din natin napapansin na di-distract tayo. Many people are like gyroscopes, gyroscopes, spinning around at a frantic pace but never going anywhere. Yan, para nag spin lang daw tayo, tayo paikot-ikot pero hindi natin alam kung saan tayo patungo. Without a clear purpose, you will keep changing directions. Jobs, relationships, churches, or other externals, hoping each change will settle the confusion or fill the emptiness in your heart. You think maybe this time it will be different, but it doesn't solve your real problem. A lack of focus and purpose. Yeah, nawawalan tayo ng focus at purpose. The Bible says, don't live carelessly. And thinkly, make sure you understand what the master wants. The power of focusing can be seen in light. Diffuse light has little power or impact, 
but you can concentrate its energy by focusing it. With a magnifying glass, the rays of the sun can be focused to set grass or paper on fire. Yan, pag nakapopocus ka tulad ng magnifying glass, ipopocus lang natin yung init ng araw, pwede niya nang masunog yung papel. Kasi nakapokus siya. When light is focused, even more as a laser beam, it can cut through steel. There is nothing quite as potent as a focus life. One live on one live on purpose. Yan. Kaya kailangan nating magkaroon ng focus life at mamuhay na alam natin yung purpose natin. The men and women who have made the greatest difference in history were the most focused. Ayan daw, yung mga great men and women daw na nabuhay na nag-made ng difference in history ay yung mga taong focus. Sila yung mga focus ones. For instance, the Apostle Paul almost single-handedly spread Christianity throughout the Roman Empire. His secret was a focus life. His, he said, I am focusing all my energies on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Ayan. Ang ginagawa nila, kinakalimutan na yung nakaraan at naglulook forward sa future. Kung ano yung to what lies ahead. If you want your life to have impact, focus it. Ayan, kailangan pala natin mag-focus talaga sa buhay, mag-focus para magkaroon ng impact. Stop doubling. Stop trying to do it all. Ayan, ihinto na din na magawa natin ng lahat kasi hindi naman natin kaya lahat yung sobrang too much na. Do less. Prune away even good activities and do only that which matters most. Never confuse activity with productivity. You can be busy without a purpose, but what's the, what's the point? Paul said, let's keep focus on that goal, those of us who want everything God has for us. Makikita siya sa Pilipias chapter 3 verse 15. At sabi dito, If you want your life to have impact, focus it. Yan, tandaan natin to. If you want your life to have impact, focus it. At sabi dito, Knowing your purpose motiv motivates your life. Yan, nagmamotivate siya sa life natin. Purpose always produces passion. Yan, nagpo-produce daw siya ng passion yung purpose natin dahil alam na natin. Nothing energizes like a clear purpose. On the other hand, passion dissipates when you lack a purpose. Just getting out of bed becomes a major chore. Chore. It is usually meaningless work, not overwork, that wears us down, saps our strength, and robs our joy. George Bernard Shaw wrote, This is the true joy of life, the being used up for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one. Being a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish little clot of ailments, little clot of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy. Sabi dito, you weren't put on earth to be remembered. You were put here to prepare for eternity. Yan. You weren't put on earth to be remembered. Hindi tayo nilagay para maalala dito. Pag namatay na tayo, 
You were put here to prepare for eternity. Nilagay tayo dito para i-prepare tayo pagdating natin sa eternity. Yung buhay na walang hanggan sa langit. Pinaprepare pala tayo dito sa earth. At knowing your purpose prepares you for eternity. Many people spend their lives trying to create a lasting legacy on earth. They want to be remembered when they're gone. Yet, what ultimately matters most will not be what others say about your life, but what God says. Ayan. Hindi na daw magmamatter ngayon kung sa banda huli, hindi na magmamatter kung ano yung sasabihin ng iba sa boy natin. Sinasabihin na, na yan, nawala na tayo, tapos maaalalahanin yung kung ano ba yung mga sasabihin ng tao sa atin. Pero mas, may mas mahalaga pa pala, mas may nagmamatter pa, yung what God will say to us. Yun yung what God says. What people fail to realize is that all achievements are eventually surpassed. Records are broken, reputations fade, and tributes are forgotten. In college, James Dobson's goal was to become the school's tennis champion. He felt proud when his trophy was prominently placed in the school's trophy cabinet. Years later, someone mailed him that trophy. They had found it in a trash can when the school was remodeled. I'm said. Jim said, Given enough time, all your trophies will be trashed by someone else. Ayan. Pinagirapan niya yun, yung trophy na yun, pero after nun, nakita na nasa basurahan din. Parang di din siya naglas. Living to create an earthly legacy is a short-sighted goal. Short-sighted goal lang siya yung magkakaroon tayo ng legacy sa earth. Pero may mas mag... Kailangan pa pala dun, mas maganda pang... Kailangan... Magawa dun. Mas may... Na ma-achieve. A wiser use of time is to build an eternal legacy. You weren't put on earth to be remembered. You were put here to prepare for eternity. One day, you will stand before God and He will do an audit of your life, a final exam before you enter eternity. The Bible says, Remember, each of us will stand personally before the judgment seat of God. Yes, each of us will have to give a personal account to God. Fortunately, God wants us to pass this test. Ayan, susunod, naharap tayo isa-isa kay Jesus, kay God, at gusto niya magkakaroon tayo ng personal account, bawat isa. At gusto niya makapasa tayo sa test na to. Kaya, so he has given us the questions in advance. Ayan, binigyan na sa atin yung question in advance para magpaghandaan natin. From the Bible, we can surmise that God will ask us two crucial questions. Ayan, may two crucial questions. First, what did you do with my son? Jesus Christ. Yan. What did you do with my son, Jesus Christ? God won't ask about your religious background or doctrinal views. Hindi na tatanungin nyo kung ano ba yung religion natin o ano ba yung mga doctrinal views natin. Ang pinaka main itatanong niya ay ano yung ginawa natin kay Jesus Christ sa san niya isa din, isa din sila, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, the God, with Holy Trinity. 
The only thing that will matter is, did you accept what Jesus did for you and did you learn to love and trust Him? Yeah, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Ayan. Tatanong na sa atin kung in ba natin si Jesus, tapos natutunan ba natin mahalin siya at pagtiwalaan siya ng lubos? At second, pangalawa, what did you do with what I gave you? Ayan. Second, what did you do with what I gave you? Ayan. Ano daw yung ginawa natin sa mga bagay na binigay niya sa atin? Ano ba yung mga bagay na binigay niya sa atin? What did you do with your life? Buhay, binigay niya tayong buhay. All the gifts, talents, opportunities, energy, relationships, and resources God gave you. Ayan. Sa mga talents, gifts, sa buhay, ano ba yung ginawa natin doon? Kung pinahalagahan ba natin siya, sila? Did you spend them on yourself or did you use them for the purposes God made you for? Ayan, ginamit lang ba natin para sa sarili natin o ginamit natin yung mga bagay na yon para magawa natin yung purposes ni God doon sa mga binigay niya na sa atin na yun. Preparing you for these two questions is the goal of this book. The first question will determine where you spend eternity. The second question will determine what you do in eternity. By the end of this book, you will be ready to answer both questions. Ayan daw. Piniprepare tayo sa dalawang question na, question na yun. At ito yung goal ng no? libro na to. Yung first question, yung magdadetermine sa atin kung saan, saan tayo mag spend ng eternity. Kung sa heaven ba, buhay na walang hanggan sa heaven, or buhay na walang hanggan sa hell. At gusto nating lahat, ay sana mapunta tayo sa heaven. At doon natin malalaman doon sa mga ginawa natin kung mapupunta tayo sa heaven. The second question will determine what you do in eternity. Ayan, yung question na yun, malalaman kung ginamit ba natin lahat ng mga binigay sa atin na talent sa kung ginamit ba natin to ng mabuti. At yun yung gagawin natin sa eternity. By the end of this book, you will be ready to answer both questions. Ayan! At sabi dito sa day 3, Thinking about my purpose. Ayan! Ito na yung kailangan nating tandaan. Tapos na tayo. Tapos na tayo. At point to ponder, Living on purpose is the path to peace. Ayan. Always remember, living on purpose is the path to peace. Ayan. Kaya maganda pala ang mamuhay tayo sa purpose talaga natin. At maglilid yon sa kapayapaan. Peace. At verse to remember, You, Lord, give perfect peace to those who keep their purpose firm and put their trust in you. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 Ayan. At question to consider What would my family and friends say is the driving force of my life? What do I want it to be? Yun daw. What would my family and friends say is the driving force of my life? Ang question to consider Ano daw ba yung, yung family natin at friends yung masasabi nila about sa driving force ng buhay natin. Kung ano ba yung nakikita nila na driving force ng buhay natin ngayon. At pagkatapos, what do I want it to be? At ngayon, ano na yung gusto natin mangyari din sa driving force ng buhay natin ngayon? Pwedeng maiba yun dahil meron tayong bagong 
nalaman at unti-unti natin malalaman yung purpose ng buhay natin at dito na po nagtatapos tapos na ang ating day 3 reading spiritual journey God bless everyone bye bye